Hi guys, so I think I found the inspiration behind this scene. Now stand aside, worthy adversary. It is but a scratch. Actually, it's Adrian Carton de Viart, a man who was wounded countless times. If the guy had had access to, to Google review, he would have given at least five stars to every battle in the First World War. He was interviewed actually by a journalist after 1918 about his experiences and said, actually, I enjoyed it while talking about the First World War. So I discovered this man via a French YouTuber and while the guy was talking about Adrian, he was starting to laugh out loud as he was telling his story because honestly, it's getting absurd at this point. So Adrian fought in the Boer War, in the First World War, in the Second World War. He was wounded. I don't know how many times. I'm not sure that he even knew how many times he was wounded. He lost an eye and a hand. And at the end of the day, his autobiography is called A Happy Odyssey. Frankly, I don't know what to tell you. So let's hear Sabaton's song, The Unkillable Soldier, about his story. Hey guys, uh, it's Indy. <laughs> it's Indy Nidal from uh, Real Time History and from the Sabaton History Channel. And uh, so Indy Nidal is an historian buddy with the group and now he's here and I guess he's Adrian. <laughs> That's awesome. Into the fire, the trenches and mud, so Actually, uh, back to Adrian, his story, his father wanted him to study law, but he wasn't interested at all. Adrian liked sport and especially fighting. So in 1899, he went to the Boer War. He was too young to enlist, so he lied about his age and was nicknamed Trooper Carton. There, he received his first wounds, one bullet in the stomach and one in the armpit and apparently he seemed to enjoy it. So in 1914, he got bored in his barracks and was asked to be sent to Somaliland to fight local rebels. But we have here a timing problem because he left on the 23rd July of 1914, so a couple of days just before the outbreak of the First World War, when uh, he realized that he was missing the biggest party of his life who was happening in Europe. So he asked to be sent back to Europe, but it was actually too late. So he did the job and was wounded four times in the attack of a village. He sheared off an ear, received a shrapnel in the shoulder, one in the eye, and then he took a bullet in the same eye. So he was then patriated to England for an operation and begged to be allowed to go back to fight uh, the Germans. fear of death because uh, Adrian thinks that, well, if I have to die, I die. So it's my destiny, so I don't care. 
and once an officer asked him to take shelter during a bombardment and Adrian I think he wanted to explain to him his theory on destiny and while the officer was asking him so to take cover the officer received a shell in front of Adrian so Adrian sees his theory proved and I think he wanted to tell him see I told you in the battles when he was shot Kept on fighting and never stopped In the Roscombe Passion Dale Ignoring his wounds he prevailed Save the day, he'll never stray Facing the foes that are coming his way Come his way, he'll never stray Saving the day And it's a madness, your time of sadness My mother soldier Yeah, actually, the woman makes me think of a theory. I think he must have had a lover in hospital because, well, um, I had to take note on his injuries. So I'm going to read it to you and I'm sorry about that. So at Ypres, he was shot. Then he was taken to hospital because his two fingers were in a very bad state. So as he was anxious to get back to the front, he cut off his fingers with his own teeth. And obviously after that things went badly and he was sent to England where he asked to have his own hand cut off. Uh, then here we saw he received a machine gun bullet in the head, was sent back to England, was back to the front, received a shrapnel in the knee was sent back to England, back to France, loses an ear, this time refuses to go back to England and resumes to the front straight away, so yeah. <laughs> At some point he had his arm amputated and he refused any kind of anesthetic because he wanted to enjoy the moment I guess. Hein? Carpe diem hein? a gun but at some point he refused to carry a gun because he thought he was too dangerous and so he ended the war with carrying an officer's stick and his assistant was only allowed to carry a plaid so imagine the sight for the German who saw this man with one eye without an arm uh, charging at them with a stick and with his assistant carrying a plaid and uh, in the sum, he was uh, with his stick jumping from trenches to trenches to motivate his men, uh, to lead men who had lost his, their officers and direct them, lead them himself.
frankly, I enjoyed the war. And uh, that's only the beginning for him because then after the war, he was sent to Poland to aid the Poles against the Bolsheviks. He disappeared after that for 20 years, then came back in 1939 at the age of 60. He went to the front, escaped to England and then went to Norway to lead commandos. He left to help the Yugoslav resistance crashed at sea en route to uh, Yugoslavia swam to the coast, was arrested by the Italian. And he was so unbearable with his jailers that the Italians tried to negotiate with the Brits to give him back. Then uh, he was liberated, then left for China to help against the Japanese. And during the occasion, at one point, was shouting at Mao Zedong during one meeting in the process. To conclude, in his memoirs, he thanks the politicians because without them, uh, there would be no war. So I, I think uh, the, the man must be kind of a, a psychopath. And uh, the conclusion of the story is that he died at over 80 year old, quite peacefully in his own bed. <sighs> uh, I don't know what I can add to this story. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it and talk to you soon. Bye.